dear testers welcome to my channel q analysis and today we are going to talk about test automation and different kind of approaches if you are looking to know about different automation approaches when to automate automation supporting uh, supporting practices different kind of skills which automation tester requires and to figure out the answer to the question which is better manual testing or automation testing so please go ahead and watch this video please don't forget to subscribe my channel for more videos on quality analysis and testing and feel free to like share and subscribe and today we are going to continue with test automation part 2 this is the second part of presentation if you haven't seen my first part of test automation presentation which talks about automation test approach please go ahead and watch it you can find the link in the description so friends in our first presentation part we talked about automation approach which included automation approaches like record and playback linear approach modular approach keyword driven automation approach and data driven automation approach now we are going to cover the remaining points in this presentation so let's move on to our next topic that is interaction with system under testing so let's move on to our first topic of the day that is interacting with the sut under this topic we'll be covering four subtopics which are testability testing using gui testing below gui and other interfaces testability the hardest part of automation is interacting with the system under test especially hard with the guis programming api ah uh, it is a little bit easier important to make it is very important to make the system easy to test some common guidelines can be add identifiers to gui widgets textual outputs should be easy to pass consider providing automation interfaces testing through gui now when we say we are going to test using graphical user interface we have certain points which need to be taken care of these are same interface as normal user is going to use can be technically challenging or impossible because many a times you have some uis which are not present at all and uh, some gui technologies they don't have good tool to interact with often it result into fragile test often relative slow to execute good approach to use when feasible so you have to have a feasible study for testing through gui and if it is feasible then you can go ahead and do it testing below gui automating through business layer is often easy because you just keep on passing the functions and you know output because the business validation has already known to you test typically run very fast but you still need to test the gui test the gui is wired correctly to the business logic because your ui and business logic are to be in sync and they are to be tested gui always have some functionality of their own which also should be covered there is also a pragmatic hybrid solution let's talk about it test overall functionality below the gui some end to end test through the gui which will ensure that right away from the starting till end everything is covered not necessarily everything is automated you can have little bit of manual intervention but still end to end testing is important other interfaces now other interfaces not all the systems have a gui many systems have multiple interfaces like programming apis databases server interfaces command lines so they always they don't have gui but they also should be covered as a part of automation testing automation framework which can utilize different drivers work well in this situation a non gui interface generally is easy to automate most of them 
are targeted for machines. Test library is just another client. So interaction is pretty easy. Now let's move on to our next topic which is when to automate and by whom. After development by separate team and during development collaboratively. These are the two approaches automation can take place either after development and there is a separate team doing it or during the development itself together. When we say automation after development, it is often done by two different teams. In worst case scenario, maybe two different teams sitting at two different floors, buildings or maybe two geolocations. There might be communication distributed teams, they often have communication problems. It is very much typical or very much common in waterfall projects. It has a slow feedback loop because everything is waiting. Once you have a development phase which is complete, then you wait, uh, then you wait for the, after the completion, you go ahead and do the automation and through automation, whatever feedback you provide, you give it to a development team, they make changes, again this process it works, but then it is very much uh, like dependent one, so you have a slow feedback loop. The stability problems can be a showstopper. Often it is hard to get the stability hooks added, to, added afterwards. May need to resort to complicated and fragile solutions. So many a times because so many parties are involved and there is lack of communication and implementation is a little tough and complex. So it may lead to complicated and fragile solutions. Let's move on to the next way which is collaborative automation this is a, one of my favorite because we do the same as part of automation in our team automation is considered as an integral part of development so automation and development they go hand in hand and together collaboration between testers and programmers you can say pair programming or test driven approach very much typical in agile projects now it is everywhere in agile projects they do the same tdb the acceptance criteria is defined and in acceptance test driven development environment automation starts before implementation you start with the negative scenarios because you don't have any functionality so all test cases will fail and as soon as your functionality is developed those tests should pass and they should be in team testability normally is not a problem programmers can create testability hooks Testability and available tooling can be taken into account even with the technology decisions. So uh, collaborative automation is a very good solution and uh, which is pretty much popular nowadays. There are certain supporting practices which should also be taken care like version control and continuous integration. Let's talk more about version control and continuous integration. In version control, this data and the code should be stored the same way as production code. So, we have different versions of this data and code just like what you have for the production. Recommended to store tests with the production code. Easy to get the older version of software with related test and data. Lots of great open source alternatives are available nowadays such as Subversion Get, Mercurial. And yes, you cannot make any excuse for that because it is always easy to use these open source tools and they are free to use. So I would recommend using either of it. The next practice which is very much popular is continuous integration. Friends, I have made a separate video on continuous integration. Please feel free to watch it. You can see the description for, you can see a link for that in my description and detailed process of continuous integration and it's important has been described. In continuous integration, Tests are run in automatic manner and it is a key to full scale automation because every time when there is new functionality, tests are added, code, code is changed as per the test and once you have the code in practice which is working fully functional, the test which were failing earlier because there was no functionality or code in, being implemented for that, now those tests should pass and with every commit you have a check being done or the automated test is uh, executed, build is created and it is verified that all the test cases are passed. If at all there is any failure, then uh, system owner or build owner is notified. 
you can have scheduled test case execution useful if you are running all tasks and it takes time great open source solution are available you can use Jenkins, Hudson, Cruise Control, Gridbot a lot many solutions are there in market and it is open source so feel free to use it available tools let's talk about some tools tools can be categorized automation tools can be categorized into three criteria which is commercial open source and freeware let's talk about commercial tools commercial tools are the good ones tend to be expensive but not all expensive tools are good be sure about it i'm telling you with my experience even cheap license can prevent full team collaboration so often it happens they say the team license can be cheaper but still i i have seen that full team collaboration with by buying license is not very worthy often hard to integrate with other automation tools especially if it is coming from, from other vendors version control and continuous integration they may or may not support hard or impossible to customize the risk of product and company discontinuation which is very common the other kind of tool they fall into category of open source tool there's a large variety of open source tool some are great and some are not you have to do your own analysis of the tool normally easy to integrate with other tools they are free <laughs> free as in beer is good everyone can use it freely free as in speech is good can be customized freely can never really die because somebody or the other will always be using it and they are open source last one is freeware tools they are getting rare nowadays most free tools are now open source no license cost tend to be easier to integrate with other tools than commercial tools hard or impossible to customize and there is a lot of chance that it would be discontinued or maybe somebody is buying it and converting to open source so these are the different kind of tools i'm not mentioning any name because i don't want to endorse any kind of tool over here so just feel free do your own set of analysis and depending upon your project requirement you can go ahead and select automation tool now we come to the next slide which talks about generic skills to learn a tester who wants to grow as an automation tester should have this generic skills or at least if not all some of it or most of it he should be aware of scripting languages like python ruby perl javascript regular expressions regular expression is a must when parsing textual outputs xpath and css selectors a must when you are doing web testing sql and dba scripting it is a must when you are doing database related testing and use of version control any of the version control system most of them they are similar and they work similarly just with a little bit of difference if no you if you know using one of the version control tools i am pretty sure learning other is is just fun it's not the tough task to do with this we come to the last slide of our presentation that is is manual testing still needed this is a very important question yes this is my personal view manual testing is very much needed it is needed now and i'm pretty sure it will be needed in future as well as per me all we need to do is to do some smart testing avoid redundant manual testing automate it in a way you don't have to do the same task again and again and again boring task let's leave it for machines and we can do some smart testing concentrate on exploratory testing friends i have created a separate video on exploratory testing please feel free to watch it you can find the link in the description machines are great for running regression tests and we don't have to do whole of the regression and running the set of test cases again and again on the belts machines can take care of that boring part humans they are skillful they have got their brain still i find human they are pretty intelligent and they are made for something which is more interesting and more challenging so all those new functional defects i assume and i think and i'm pretty sure 
humans should be much more interested in finding those and that can be taken care of using exploratory testing. So this is my point of view. Please feel free to add your comments, share your feedback and do let me know what is your thought. I look forward to any kind of questions and feedback from your end. Thank you friends. Thanks a lot and see you soon in my next presentation. Take care. Bye-bye.